Sean Combs, the music mogul recently inundated with a wave of sexual assault and sex trafficking allegations and lawsuits, is now the focus of federal law enforcement after it comes out multiple properties associated with the rapper have been raided by federal agents. Former FBI and CIA agent Tracy Walder breaks down what these raids could mean for the rapper and music executive. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. He is a man of many names, Puffy, P. Diddy, Diddy, his legal name, Sean Combs. You know who I'm talking about, the rapper, producer, entertainment icon, reported billionaire. He has been in the spotlight a lot over the last few months, and I will tell you, not in a good way. And now he is in the news in a shocking development. Federal agents have raided homes, properties associated with the rapper in Miami and Los Angeles. This is reportedly pursuant to search warrants from the Southern District of New York. A Homeland Security investigation spokesperson told ABC News on Monday, quote, earlier today, Homeland Security investigations, New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, that's Homeland Security. Security, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. According to NBC News, a source indicated that federal authorities have interviewed three women and one man in New York in connection to allegations of human trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms, and that interviews with other individuals are also planned. Now, to be very clear, we don't know whether Combs is the target of this trafficking investigation, what his connection is in any way. And we also can't confirm to you at the time of this recording if Diddy has been detained or arrested, if he's even in the country. There are videos that have circulated online about him being at the Miami airport while this was going on. Reporting also indicates his jet may have left the country. Some reporting indicating the jet is possibly in the Caribbean. We just don't know. And I will tell you, at the time of this recording, no criminal charges have been filed in connection with this investigation, as far as we know. Uh, What we do know, or what I should say our sidebar viewers and listeners will know, is that this development may not be that much of a surprise. Why do I say that? Because we dedicated several shows to the recent lawsuits against Diddy his family, associates, companies for allegations of sex trafficking, sexual abuse, harassment, allegations of firearm possession, a shooting, drugs. Now, to be clear, while we talk about these lawsuits today, we do not know if they are in any way connected to this investigation But we do clearly have a lot to get into. So with that, without further ado, let me bring in right now Tracy Walder, former CIA and FBI agent, national security contributor for News Nation, author of The Unexpected Spy, was with me last night as I was hosting Dan Abrams Live talking about this. Tracy, good morning. Good to see you again. Good morning, Jesse. Thank you for having me. All right. Your overall thoughts on this raid. What a development this is. You know, it is it is quite a development, but, you know, just like you mentioned before, I'm not necessarily surprised that it happened because there has been so much in regards to civil cases. Now, I realize that civil those civil cases are going to have no bearing um, on this the raids that occurred. I understand that. But at the same time, in my opinion, where there's smoke, there's fire, and a lot of these civil cases probably have criminal merit um, at some point. And so... I I am not necessarily surprised that this happened, but what will surprise me and I think might surprise some people is the sheer volume and connection of any kind of sex trafficking ring that he allegedly may have been running. I think that is what is going to come probably as the most surprising to folks, how in-depth something like this was, how long something like this may have gone on for, and how many people were involved. Typically, HSI really looks at sex trafficking in regards to minors. And so that's another layer to this as well that I think is probably the surprising component. And I I mean, last night, a lot of people were making comparisons. Oh, he's the Jeffrey Epstein of the hip hop world. Now, again, he hasn't been charged. um, And even if he is charged, he'll be innocent until proven guilty. Having said that, I'm reading through these lawsuits and I remember one of his associates was compared to being the Ghislaine Maxwell of this situation. So there are these kinds of connections that people are making. We'll get into it a little bit more. But going back to the raid, why do you think it happened when it happened, right? 
It's not just because it was a sunny day in Los Angeles and Miami. The timing of this, I have to feel, is very strategic. Look, you're absolutely right. Yes, it was actually a beautiful day um, on yeah. both coasts, quite frankly, to conduct this raid. Um, I've participated in you know, several raids during my time with the FBI, and that's actually not uncommon, particularly in federal type of crimes, which is what we're looking at here. Crimes that are going to cross state borders. You, The key in something like this, in a nonviolent crime, is to the preservation of evidence. That's what is so important here. And that is why I believe this, this was done at exactly the same time. It's actually not unusual. It's something that is done, and sometimes it's less about capturing the person and more about ensuring that evidence is still there, evidence has not been destroyed, and we can get as much as possible. Would that mean they had some sort of knowledge or some sort of belief that evidence was about to be destroyed at that moment? You know, and I, I struggle to make this comparison, so hopefully people won't be frustrated, but this is actually similar what we saw with former President Trump at Mar-a-Lago in that they had some indication that evidence was in the process of perhaps being destroyed or was potentially going to be destroyed. And so what I think is in this case, they may have an, had an indication, excuse me, that evidence was being moved, was being destroyed. Participants were moving around and trying to you know, squirrel away evidence. And so yes, sometimes you have to act under a sense of urgency. I don't know in terms of a criminal case, you know, what's being built against Diddy, as you mentioned, he is currently at the taping of this show not under any criminal charges, um, but it, it's probably correct to assume that evidence was perhaps going to be destroyed imminently. And, and I know there was reporting to indicate that certain um, items were removed from the house. That's what was observed yesterday or removed from the properties. I am reminded of something from one of the lawsuits, one of the recent lawsuits that we covered here on Sidebar. It was filed by a producer of Diddy's former producer, Little Rod Jones. This was for sexual assault, harassment, really disturbing allegations. But Jones alleged that Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his homes and the secret recordings of celebrities and associates that he says has quote compromising footage of every person that has attended his party so I, I the first thing that i thought of yesterday what could they be looking for potentially if this is a sex trafficking investigation um is whether there's videotapes and the camera system right right and so i think and I was going to mention this, digital evidence is key. Obviously, right. in this at this point in time, it's really easy to destroy digital evidence. It's not something that's difficult to do, which is why they went in there um, and went in there simultaneously. You know, again, you made the comparison to Epstein. I think, you know, Epstein, he was also recording and also had secret cameras really throughout all of his homes, private planes, all of that. And, you know, his client list was more about politicians. Here, I think what we're going to see are clients involved in the uh, entertainment business or pop culture, if you will. And so I do think um, right now, this is going to be a huge web that they're going to have to untangle. And I'm expecting it's going to take quite some time to go through all of that digital evidence because I fully expect that he had cameras in other locations as well. It's my understanding that th those aren't just his two sole places of re residence and where he spends time. So I suspect there will be more digital evidence. And by the way, before we get into the substance of any of these lawsuits, um, if Diddy left the country, right, uh, if the reporting is indicated that he fled or left, um, that would signify to me he was tipped off, right? I mean, anytime right. you have somebody, and again, we don't know if he was detained. We don't know if he was arrested. I would think not. Wouldn't that information have come out? Um, because a part of me thought that he might have been detained, put in one of those transport vehicles, maybe brought in. We just didn't know about it. I, I imagine we might know about it today. Maybe not. I'll ask you. But also, if he had left the country, um, that means someone tipped him off. And I think that would be of a concern, right? Oh, of course, that would be of concern. I was looking at the flight log um, of, I believe he has a Gulf Stream. Yeah. Um, it looks to me like that plane landed in Antigua in at about 9 a.m. So actually, yeah. that would have been before 
this raid occurred, right? So then you would have a difficult time saying, you know, he was leaving because of the raid. And we don't know if he's on it. We don't know if he's on that plane or what the deal is. You don't know who the passengers are on the plane. You just know that it's traveling somewhere. Well, people have private planes and they use them for things other than when they are on them, right? And so we also know too, that he was at the Miami airport. There was footage of him kind of seen pacing on the phone. I believe that if they had a specific warrant for him, but again, this is just me speculating. Sure. I believe if they had a specific warrant for him, they would have probably arrested him at that point in time. I'm not saying that an arrest isn't going to be forthcoming, but I truly believe, and I said this last night when I was speaking with you, that the execution of these warrants was really about the preservation of evidence um, and less about arresting him. I suspect that may come at a later time. Why the manpower? And and the reason I'm going to take a guess, I'm going to take a stab at this, is because I go back to what I read in the lawsuits. Again, the lawsuits are lawsuits. They're allegations. But his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, Cassie Ventura, she filed a lawsuit against him in November of 2023. She ended up settling. But she accused Diddy of not only physically and sexually abusing her, allegedly forcing her into sexual slavery and sex trafficking, but she claimed that he beat her forced her to have sex with prostitutes on video while he watched and masturbated, but also forced her to carry a gun for him. She also alleged that Combs blew up rapper Kid Cudi's car because he found out that Cudi was romantically interested in Ventura. Then, in one of the latest lawsuits that I mentioned from Little Rod Jones, Jones brings up this event, a shooting that happened at Chalice Record Studios out in uh, Los Angeles, where apparently he says there was a heated fight between Combs. His son, Justin, who was actually handcuffed yesterday, or the reporting indicates he was handcuffed, and Justin's friend identified as G. Gunshots rang out. G was lying on the ground with blood coming out of his leg and hip area. Combs allegedly told his team to tell police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. And then Jones, in the lawsuit, provided screenshots of the bloodstained bathroom where he claims G was shot by either Combs or his son and claims he still has the clothing for evidence. Now, again, I say all that to believe if they think that they're entering into a violent environment, right? Let me go back a little bit. They, they yeah. absolutely would have every reason to believe that they're going into a violent environment. And, you know, really, Diddy's history with violence and firearms goes back pretty far, even into the time when he was dating Jennifer Lopez. Right. Um, there were, um, you know, that had occurred as well. I believe it was at a nightclub. There was a shooting there as well that he was involved in, although it could be incorrect. No, no, so, no. Uh, and by the way, in one of the latest lawsuits, that is brought up. And basically right. the allegation was that, Uh, Diddy was involved in that shooting, but had someone cover for him. Cover for him. And that's how I had recalled that as well. And so they had every reason to believe at the FBI. And again, FBI is not HSI, but they operate the same in terms of how they're executing warrants and things of that nature. If you believe you're going into a hostile environment, you are going to bring your special teams with you, whether that's a SWAT team, those kinds of things, they're going to come with you. And so the fact that his sons were handcuffed, and I know there was a lot of discussion about that, about how it wasn't fair, that's actually very proper procedure, and that's to ensure the safety of everyone. Um, His sons are adults. Uh, They are known to have weapons. They may not have been arrested, but handcuffing them until you are sure that the home is secure and all weapons are secure is actually a very valid and very normal thing to do. Additionally, so you have that with the, with the history of violence and weapons, there's no question, but then you also have teams that have to go in there and process all of that digital evidence that we just talked about. So you have these massive SWAT and tactical teams going in to disarm, and then you also have agents going in there to collect evidence. So that, that is why this is such a large group of people. Also, you know, Jesse, I'm, I'm from LA. This this area in Homeby Hills, where one of his homes were, is massive. So you need a lot of agents to cover that the entirety of that area. So it's, it's actually not surprising. And we actually don't know, I mean, I saw reporting that it might actually be associated with the Bad Boy Films production, like that might be the home. So again, maybe it's, I don't know if it's personal residence or it's one of his company's properties. I agree. That's what I had saw as well is uh, maybe the registered owner is is that. (sighs) That's difficult, right? Because the reality is, is he owns that production company. Sure, sure. Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, and so um, the reality is, is that it's still associated with him as he is the owner of that company. So look, it may not be his primary residence. I have 
no idea, um, obviously, but at the same time, it is a company that is known and documented to be associated with him and his sons were there. And let's talk about the sons, Justin and King Combs. Um, so we saw this video, what appeared to be them in handcuffs. Um, I said it yesterday on, on um, when I was seeing this, and I, you said it too, not necessarily they are arrested and charged with a crime, uh, but they could be just detained while the search is happening. Now, I say that, but again, the first thing that I thought was the little Rod Jones lawsuit. And one of the things he talks about how it was how any alleges that this past summer, July 2nd, 2023, out in California, claims that Combs had a party with underage girls and sex workers at his home and his son and an unidentified R&B artist were there. Quote, he is a Grammy award winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bahan billionaire. Now, again, embedded in that lawsuit are screenshots of a video taken of this party where it allegedly shows Combs either kissing or dancing almost face to face with a purported underage girl. So many times in this latest lawsuit, his son is implicated in this alleged wrongdoing. I believe, just like I do believe that charges for Diddy are forthcoming, I believe that charges for his sons most likely are as well. Now, given the raid and when it occurred, if they were in illegal possession of firearms based on California gun laws, then they could have probably taken them into custody right then and there for obvious reasons. I don't think that that's what they're going to do. I suspect that they were simply detained for the duration of the search and then they were let go. But again, I, I'm simply hypothesizing here, but I do think at this point, if his sons had been arrested and formally booked, we would know probably at this point right. based on public access to those documents. And we don't know that information. And so I just assume that for the safety of everyone there, they were physically detained during the duration of the search, which again is very normal procedure in, in something like this. There have obviously been a lot of reaction and a lot of response to that, including in the celebrity route. I mean, 50 Cent posted on uh, Instagram about the raids. Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. Speaking of that, so if we think about the possibility of a sex trafficking investigation, sex trafficking related charges, if we go to December 2023, uh, there was a woman who accused Combs and former Bad Boy Entertainment President Harvey Pierre uh, and another person of sex trafficking and gang raping her when she was 17 years old. Um, there was a Jane Doe who says that she was flown from Michigan to New York City, supplied with drugs and alcohol, and then assaulted by all three men at Combs' recording studios. Now, Combs, by the way, has always denied the allegations. And in fact, in response to one lawsuit, I uh, had posted, I believe it was on Instagram, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I've sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do, and he goes on to say, did not do this. Now, uh, again, that was in relation to a lot of these lawsuits being filed. But when we're talking about sex trafficking, Tracy, and we're talking about the Southern District of New York possibly in initiating this search warrant, where does your mind go in terms of what we might be looking at in terms of Hot potential charges, potential allegations, uh, and how it's connected to New York. So I absolutely believe, and again, simply my hypothesis, he is innocent until proven guilty that he will be um, arrested and well, indicted on sex trafficking charges. I have no doubt um, about that. And I do believe that he was most likely the kingpin um, of this. These girls, what that tells me, if it's out of the Southern District of New York, is this is spanning multiple states um, and that he is trafficking or allegedly trafficking girls um, across multiple states, across the United States. This isn't just an isolated incident um, in one location. And so I have heard um, things as well about his Hamptons parties and things happening in those Hamptons parties as well. So I suspect um, more evidence may come out as a result of that. But these are extremely serious uh, charges. And part of me too, is frustrated um, by somewhat the complacency, right, of the entertainment industry as a whole. Um, 
in this. Uh, and I think sometimes people fly under the radar for a long time, like Epstein did as well, um, because people are scared. Uh, people want to still climb the ranks and we're doing it all the while sort of sacrificing the safety of these, these young victims or girls that are involved in this. And that is deeply troubling. Before we get into more of this, I, I, I hear you, and, and I, I think, you know, it's really, really frightening to think about. I mean, I read all these allegations and the lawsuits, and I was, I've was i never heard anything like it. Um, and obviously, we don't know exactly where this investigation is going. But if Combs is charged with federal crimes here, but he's not in the country, and he's actually in a country uh, or a jurisdiction where there's no extradition agreement, how do you get him back? How? What do federal authorities do? That's a really good question. I looked up just because I was curious actually about it. Yeah. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Some I do, some I don't. Um, but we do have an extradition treaty with them. Um, right now, though, because of the public nature of this, I have a very hard time believing that a country would allow his plane to land with him on it in their country. They don't have to let him land if they don't want to. And so I think that it would be very difficult for him to be able to land in an inhospitable country simply because they don't want him. We do have extradition treaties with more countries than I think people would think. And typically they will send folks back to us as long as we take the death penalty off of the table. And I don't believe that this is a death penalty case. It's Southern District of New York. And so I believe that whether we have an extradition treaty or not with whatever country he may or may not go to, um, they will send him back. And talk to me about what you think they have in terms of a case, because, right, you, you say they want to preserve the evidence for a potential uh, uh, prosecution against either him or someone else. There's a criminal case building, but they had to have probable cause for the search warrant uh, to be issued. And I wonder, you know, I mentioned some of the interviews. They wouldn't have had enough to just to try to arrest him first and then do the raid or they need the raid first to see what's at the property before they can build a case and build charges and then arrest him. Talk to me about the timeline of how this typically works in terms of if we're seeing a, a raid on several properties. Does that in conjunction with an arrest? Does that come before an arrest? Uh, does that you know, how does it typically work? Typically, Jesse, it's in conjunction with an arrest. But I started thinking about this a little bit more last night, and I was was thinking that if he has videos and or his associates have videos, and they are attempting to distribute those of young male children or female children, that means that a child is in imminent danger. Mm -hmm. And so part of me wonders if this was done to stop that um, and that they will get to the arrest obviously at some point um, because you know as you mentioned typically these these warrants are served and there's usually an indictment that goes you know hand in hand with that at the same time so in my opinion it's not unheard of it's just a little bit unusual we don't typically right. see this anytime we did raids um, at the FBI of, of this nature we ha also had an arrest warrant uh, for the individual as well and so it is unusual, but I don't want to say it's unheard of. And again, I'm just speculating, but part of me wonders if this was still actively being distributed. Um, and if it is, they need to shut that down immediately. Um, were you surprised at the response that we saw from Douglas Wigdor? This is a lawyer for Cassie Ventura and one of the Jane Doe's in response to reports of this search warrant that was issued on Sean Combs. Now, remember, Cassie Ventura settled with Sean Combs, but the statement says, quote, we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Now, again, in light of that settlement, settlement doesn't necessarily mean you're saying Combs is completely innocent. It's you've agreed to resolve the issue. Um, doesn't you know absolve him of wrongdoing, but to make that statement, I think that's something to be said. Now, again, of course, he's representing someone else that's continually uh, suing uh, Sean Combs. But again, that that statement I thought was really interesting. What was your take on it? Yeah, I thought that that statement was interesting. Um, my my question about it, though, is did he tip them off? Did he provide them with information? Um, you know, did Cassie Ventura or any of these individuals involved in these civil suits 
also provide evidence along with that to build this criminal case because obviously those two things are separate. So in my opinion, in listening to that statement, it actually sounds like maybe they did. Um, and you know that's incredible that they did that um, because I believe that Cassie Ventura was absolutely a victim of pretty horrific uh, things. And if she was able to document all of that and provide evidence, then that absolutely would go to building his criminal case. It's just, it's so crazy to think about this. I mean, it, it's, it, again, and I'm not surprised by that connection to New York because I go back to Little Rod Jones and he said he was assaulted at different places, including uh, in New York. Um, so again, what can we expect next to happen uh, as this story develops? And I imagine it's going to develop quite rapidly. I agree with you. I think it's going to develop quite rapidly as well. I think the next thing that will happen is an indictment of P. Diddy. Um, that, that's what I think, and that he will be taken into custody hopefully soon um, at some point. But honestly, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. This is, like I said, a little yeah. bit unusual um, and that there isn't an indictment yet, although I think one may be forthcoming. What about other individuals? Because remember, uh, going back to one of the lawsuits, uh, there was an allegation that was there were violations of the TVPA, the Trafficking and Victims Protection Act, big law aimed at fighting against domestic and international human slavery, and uh, it was a they, they were filing a, a, a civil action with respect to it. But um, you're basically saying these minors are engaging in commercial sex acts. Um, I would imagine that if this is a really big operation, we could potentially see uh, arrests of other individuals connected to uh, the rapper, right? I agree. I think um, we will probably see the arrest of one or both of his sons because I, I believe that they, based on evidence in cases that we've seen in the past from a civil perspective, they have been allegedly involved in this. But at the same time, too, um, I think that there may be a lot of people who have associated with him um, in his circle that are probably scared right now um, because they may have had some involvement in this as well. And so in my opinion, I think they will start at the top, obviously arresting Diddy um, or his sons. And from there, in my opinion, they may try to plea. I don't think he's going to completely avoid jail time or anything like right. that if he's indicted, but maybe they will try to plea to get names of other individuals that are associated with this. But again, Completely my hypothesis, Jesse. And and I'll leave on this. There was reporting, there was an allegation that Combs may have been allegedly harassing Mr. Jones uh, because of that lawsuit that he filed. Um, Jones alleges that Combs sent agents to intimidate his eight-year-old daughter and the mother mm -hmm. of his child and his ex-wives. So you talk about the imminence of this raid. You talk about the manpower put forward by this raid. Um, if that is true, uh, and again, we don't know if it's connected to the lawsuit in any way, but that's something else to think about, right? 100%. He has a pretty long documented history of threatening individuals and asking them to, I guess, clean up his mess or clean up his dirty work, if you will. And so that is not at all uh, surprising to me. And I do assume uh, that individuals who may have been involved in speaking out or testifying in any of these civil cases may also be awarded uh, some type of security and protection as well. Tracy Walder, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Jesse. All right, everybody, that is all we have for you right now here on Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.
everybody, and welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us with once again an hour long deep dive into the latest surrounding music mogul, Sean Diddy Combs. And what better way to do that than to answer your viewer questions? That's right, for the next hour, submit your questions on Facebook, Twitter, X, YouTube. Get them to us. Super chats, best way to get your questions to the top. We'll talk about it right here on air. Any questions you might have about this ongoing case and what are we talking about right now? We are breaking down for you the rapper's multi-million dollar properties in LA, Miami. They were searched by Homeland Security earlier this week. This was purportedly in connection to an ongoing New York sex trafficking investigation. It's now being reported that firearms were found at both of these properties. The raids came amid several civil lawsuits that were filed in recent months accusing the rapper of sexual assault, including rape domestic violence. And around the time of the raids, Diddy was reportedly seen pacing back and forth outside of a Miami airport, accompanied by some family members. At the time, the 54-year-old was not detained, allegedly cooperated with authorities. However, in the latest development, Diddy's associate and alleged drug mule, Brendan Paul, was arrested and charged with possession of cocaine and marijuana. Now, I should tell you, I say alleged drug mule because that is an allegation that was made in one of these lawsuits that he supplies Diddy with uh, firearms and narcotics. Now, Combs' attorney, Aaron Dyer, responded to the raid saying, quote, yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force. Search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Dyer went on to say that the raids were, quote, a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs that is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no findings of criminal liability or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his day, his name. Now, remember, Combs has not been criminally charged in connection with any of these allegations. And as this story develops, we are going to bring you the very, very latest. In the meantime, as we take your questions and as we do this Q&A, you know I'm not going to be doing it by myself. I got some great help, great panel. Long Crimes legal analyst Brian Buckmeyer is with us in studio. And also rap and hip-hop legal expert Afi Patterson. Great to have you both here. Let's get right into it. First question we got. This one's for you, Brian. This is from uh, Chocolo 8 milk from YouTube. I think it was the first question from yesterday, too. Uh, it, if it is proven that Diddy transported people on his private jets and trafficked, could the pilots and flight attendants on Diddy's private jets be charged with human trafficking as well? So because there's a lot of prefaces to that question, the short answer would be yes, they could, but it would depend on the level of knowledge that they had. Now, if you're talking about minors and then someone who clearly looks like they're 11, 12, 13 years old, under the age of consent, and a pilot or a stewardess or whoever it may be, may have seen these children go on and off the, the plane, some questions could be raised, but you don't necessarily know what you're flying them to. Now, if they are completely knowledgeable about what's going on, absolutely. So it really comes down to knowledge and what they saw. Okay, so that's a good way to start it off. Um, and it kind of leads into a next question here. Afi, I'll throw this one to you. This is Nikki Hayes from YouTube. Are the three female and one male whistleblowers just, and the reason they're saying this is because NBC had reported that there were multiple people uh, who had cooperated with uh, federal authorities in Manhattan. Um, are they just witnesses or victims, a mix of both? And will their anonymity be protected, possible witness protection? It seems like uh, everybody who happens to be a witness in this situation is also somehow uh, a victim. I don't know uh, what, what's going to happen, but definitely I think that they will probably be witnesses. Um, speaking of witness protection, I was um, reading over the uh, original petition again, and then the amended petition for um, the most uh, recent matter. And one of the alleged victims is in fact missing. I think he goes by the name G. So I think a lot of people who uh, want to come forward in addition to these uh, people who were turning witness um, uh, whistleblowers, I think that they are going to um, want or look into some type of protection. You know, what are they getting in return for, you know, giving up uh, this evidence and the information that they have? Um, you know, it's been alleged, especially since um, Cassie's petition came out, that he, you know, believes in, in retribution and he has... Um, I guess, ways in which he can get to people, which frightens people. So I think that that's something that they probably will be interested in. 
You know what? Before we even go to another question, I want to ask you, Afi, what has been the reaction? We've seen it a little bit already from you know, people like 50 Cent, but what has the reaction been in the hip hop community to these raids? Um, I think, you know, the, the coverage, you know, something that uh, I was looking at was the amount of coverage. How, how did the um, helicopters know? How did the news stations know, um, you know, that, that this was coming? It seems like, you know, somebody was tipped off. I think people um, have been uh, feeling really, um, emotional about seeing his children out there handcuffed, you know, they uh, feel sorry for, um, the daughters that he has, you know, um, you know, that's pretty much been a response, but pretty much what I've seen is that people have been talking about, um, Diddy for years since the nineties, there have been rumors afoot. And I think now they feel, um, some people feel like, okay, the, what is it? Do chickens come home to roost? I think that's pretty much the sentiment. Mm, interesting. All right, let's go back to your questions. This is Capri Law from YouTube. Uh, go to you, Brian, on this one. Do non-disclosures hold up with his victims if he's indicted? If they're considered victims and if they are indicted, if Sean Combs is indicted, then no, you cannot NDA criminal activity. I think we touched on this uh, yesterday. I won't use the same example, Jesse, of punching you. But if you commit a crime against an individual and you ask them to sign an NDA, an NDA being a contract where something is given in exchange for their silence, oftentimes money, if it's criminal in nature and the prosecutor comes towards you, you're not necessarily able to say, I can't talk about this crime because of the NDA. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, and obviously, that's going to be a big theme if, in fact, remember, the timing of this is so interesting. Out of all the times to raid Diddy's properties, when you're talking about allegations that seemingly span years, it comes after these lawsuits. So it always makes us wonder if what if the, any of these people who are suing him are cooperating with law enforcement. Let's continue on the questions. Uh, this one's a really interesting one. Afi, I... I don't know the answer to this one. That's why I'm so glad we have you. Ooh. Ruby Ocean from YouTube. Did Diddy give Faith Evans, and I think this is Mace, but Mace or Muse, music rights to protect them? Hmm. Interesting question, right? So um, that came up in a conversation that I had yesterday because um, recently we've heard reports, I think over the last year, that Diddy's been turning over um, publishing to a lot of his artists that haven't had it, um, that, you know, haven't had any ownership um, since inception. So the idea is like maybe, you know, he's playing nice, um, giving them something so they won't in turn uh, say anything negative about him. But the, the question is, um, I have heard, of course, I, you know, I hate he say, she say rumors, but in exchange for these publishing that he's asking for an NDA. But um, in addition to that, I've been told that the value of this publishing is just nothing. So you have to, you know, look at what is the value that he's returning to these people? Is it something that's really being done in good faith? Um, is he doing it in exchange for something else? But, you know, that's been that's been going on and talked about for the last year. Mm. All right. Let's move on to another celebrity here. I'm going to throw it to Brian. First, I'll answer it because I never get to answer anything. So this is Zane Haywood from YouTube. Has Cuba Gooding Jr. been arrested yet in this case? No, he is not. However, Brian, we both know he is now included as a defendant in the amended complaint, meaning the complaint has been changed, has been modified. He has now been added as a defendant in that lawsuit that was filed by little Rod uh, Rodney Jones, a former producer of Diddy, accuses him of sexual harassment, sexual assault. There are allegations against Cuba, Good Cuba Gooding Jr. in that lawsuit, right, Brian? Absolutely. So I'll talk about it as the February complaint and then the March complaint, almost about a month apart. I guess February 26th and March 25th, just this last Monday. Now, the complaint is amended in the sense that Cuba Gooding Jr. is mentioned in both complaints. Even in the February complaint, there are allegations of sexual assault. And there's even photos that Rodney Jones says corroborates that he believes he was being groomed for the purpose of being given off to Cuba Gooding Jr. But there are some touching that he said was unwarranted. Again, all allegations so far, nothing has been corroborated. The difference between the March complaint is that Cuba Gooding Jr., the facts are still there from the February complaint, but Cuba Gooding Jr. is now listed as a defendant in this case. That's the major difference here, but the facts seem to always have been the same. Mm. Let's go to uh, Four Corner Media P from YouTube. Afi, I'm going to throw this to you. Will they question Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal? 
Yes. Um, Gene's been everywhere and Gene seems like he's, um, pretty amenable to conversations. He's, you know, he'll take an interview, he'll give an interview in a heartbeat. So I, you know, they may have already reached out to him, but I definitely think that they're going to try and track him down because he's been giving, um, just a lot of insight, things that, um, an ordinary person, you know, he's, um, like, a, a, you know, he's the body man, just an ordinary uh, person wouldn't know. So I definitely, I think that, um, if they haven't reached out to him already, they definitely will. Uh, I'm going to go to you, Brian, on this one at humming Burtis from Twitter X never can get used to it. I'm never going to get used to it. How likely is it that some of these high profile people will get off just because of who they are? Now, again, no one has been criminally charged as of yet, but it is a very fair question to ask, ask when we talk about these high profile investigations. I mean, it's the same thing we talk about when we've dealt with a Harvey Weinstein situation or R. Kelly situation. High profile people involved in these uh, alleged crimes, uh, well, they were convicted, but it's a really interesting question because we talk about that celebrity factor, Brian. Well, I would, you listed some names. I would say the celebrity factor didn't really help Harvey Weinstein, didn't help R. Kelly, didn't help Bill Cosby. Uh, I think it would be less about who they are and more about the quality and quantity of the evidence against them. So far, if you look at all five of the complaints, Cassandra Ventura is being uh, settled within a day. Those facts still exist. If these five are speaking with the Southern District of New York and others are coming forward, and now you have where you didn't probably in the past, the Southern District of New York and the federal government saying, you know what, we'll put our money where our mouth is, do the investigations across the country, as well as potentially put people in witness protection, that affords them greater latitude and a greater opportunity to go after someone regardless of what their name is. So mm -hmm. when I see an investigation to this degree, I started thinking celebrity status might not mean as much in other avenues or other areas. All right. These are great questions so far. Keep them coming in. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, X. If you have a question about the current Diddy situation, now's the time to ask. Uh, this is an interesting one for you, Afi. Gypsy Trails from YouTube. If we look at Jones's court documents, he names Robin Greenhill, the person helping move money. Will they investigate Greenhill, TriStar, Lou Taylor? who is also in court with Britney Spears? Absolutely. I, I actually hope they do. And, you know, that was another thing that I um, thought when um, I saw the raids. I think that there are going to be financial crime allegations. I think, you know, financial crimes is probably the easiest thing to get them on um, or to go after him on if that's um, what you're looking for, if you're looking to... Um, uh, nail him down for something. But um, absolutely, I think, uh, again, that complaint is just fertile ground, and those people are also targets. Brian, let me turn it over to you now. Um, and, and it's another question about the web of this, because this is from Dominic K from YouTube. Have they announced more people beyond Diddy being investigated? It seems very purposeful to use Diddy first in all of this because he's famous. Let me first preface this by saying it's not even clear he is the one being investigated. He is linked to this investigation. I don't know if, if we can officially say he is a target of the investigation, like they're trying to bring charges against him. Having said that, um, the way I would look at it, and I'm curious your perspective, is that they're right now trying to gather evidence and those properties might have evidence that would lead them to charges. So your, your uh, analysis on that point. I mean, my analysis goes right to the page 35 of uh, Ronnie Jones's addendum, uh, sorry, uh, amended uh, complaint where he specifically says, uh, according to Mr. Jones, who lived with Diddy for 13 months and traveled with him, that Mr. Combs display and distribute guns from his bedroom closets in Miami and Los Angeles. Where did they go and investigate and where did they allegedly uh, find guns? We're hearing reports that guns were found in both locations. Both of those locations were searched. Uh, the way in which they searched it to me suggests that they believe that people were either armed in those locations or had guns. That goes towards what Diddy's uh, defense attorneys are saying that they were armed like the military, to, so to speak. And so while we haven't heard officially from the Southern District of New York, I would say that it is close enough to surmise that Sean Combs, based on the complaints we see, where they're going, and what his defense attorneys are coming out, could possibly be the target. Now, will we hear other people as well? I think we've heard them named in this lawsuit. We've talked about Cuba Gooding Jr. as well. But until more evidence is collected, and they, being the Southern District of New York, wants to come out with it, we're probably not going to hear about other names. Mm. And by the way, you could have some high-profile names who they're subpoenaing. Sub can't say the word. Subpoenaing. Uh, subpoenaing. Uh, for more information regarding this investigation, we might not know. Uh, Brian, let me just stick with you for one second. Um, this is a question from Dark Vadis' wife from YouTube. 
Um, different question, to say the least. Um, I might answer this one, but I'll throw it to you. Does this raid on Diddy make you take another look at the Jonathan Adi interrogation and what may have happened to him? Remember, he's the guy who shot up the uh, Trump, was a Trump National Doral, or uh, I, I would say I don't see the connection. Yeah, I don't see the connections. I can understand one investigation um, having a, a quantity or quality of evidence and then the prosecutors and government going after them. And then you're looking at another case and saying, well, this had a similar level of information. Why did they not go? Um, I'm not too familiar with the, with the second case, but yeah. I would say I haven't heard of five sexual assault allegations against them or decades of rumors of crimes. So I would think that the quality of the evidence yeah. and information be, might be a little apples to oranges. Okay, let's go over to at Handsome Hensley from X. So modest, so yeah. modest. But Afi, I'll throw it to you. Uh, how will this affect the music industry? This seems to be a domino effect being linked to Sir Lucian Grand, uh, I might be pronouncing Grange, and other top execs, Grange, sorry, and other top execs in the industry. I don't think it will affect the music industry at all. Um, it's been what it's been for years. I think this is um, incredibly salacious. I think it's going to be isolated to taking down one person. And, you know, that's it. I think, you know, it, people might be a little sensitive and um, aware uh, for now, but I don't think it's going to change the music industry. And just to also... I want to mention, you asked about um, the gentleman who shot up uh, Trump Tower. I think, you know, I, I have literally gone down rabbit holes and conspiracy theories. That um, man was tied to supposed prostitution, Diddy, cover-up, and um, conspiracies with uh, the sheriff's department. Like, you, you can go down a rabbit hole with that, but there's definitely a connection. There's some smoke there. Interesting. Okay. So maybe there, you know more about it than I do. Um, all right, Brian, let me go back to you. Um, why wasn't the raid on Jeffrey Epstein as intense as this? I, I don't know. I can't tell you why. I mean, I, I'll give you this. I, I practice in the Southern District of New York. I'm actually going there this afternoon. I've seen the investigations, uh, both in that court and as well as the EDNY and, and, and through New York. I can't tell you why one is more aggressive okay. than the other. It's. I'll give you a different question. Yeah. I'll give you a different question. Uh, this is uh, from Sunset Firefly from YouTube. How much time could Diddy get for human trafficking charges? So if you're talking about human trafficking charges, the, the, the statute that Ronnie Jones is claiming that... Uh, the Sean TVPA? Cole violated, sorry? The TVPA? The trap, the trap. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, if you look at it from a standpoint of coercion and force, he could be facing 25 years uh, maximum per charge. Then if you look at it in terms of an allegation of multiple people getting traffic, if there are separate and distinct interactions, a judge could say, I'm going to consec you on all of these. So he could theoretically be facing life in prison based on the amount of years. Mm, okay. Afi, over to you. Chrissy Lee from YouTube. Was Jay-Z named in any of this? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if Jay-Z was named in um, anything um, because uh, the uh, the attorney, he was he was listing all sorts of people that uh, Diddy is connected to who has um, who have influence. I don't recall, but I do know that his name was all over Twitter and people are um, drawing an insane connection. So but I don't I don't recall if he was uh, in the in the complaint. Brian, you would know. Better than Brian I says no. I'm, I, I'm doing a quick Google okay. search and apparently 50 Cent uh, feuded with Jay-Z. Right. And there's something. What's the, what's so there's on? I mean, Afi could do this better than I am. So one, I will talk about the legal. No, Jay-Z is not mentioned, but there is a giant feud between Sean Combs, 50 Cent, and Jay-Z. Uh, Jay-Z and, and Diddy kind of being on the same side and 50 Cent kind of throwing um, like different insults and whatnot, even to the point that I think, and again, Afi can be better at this one, I think that 50 Cent put out that there was going to be like a documentary on Netflix that was supposed to be already out according to the post. Did he do it? Did he do it? Yeah. First of all, great name. I, I wish we thought of it first, um, but I think this is a lot more chatter in the background that may turn out to be something real, but at this point, it, it could just be rappers and and moguls beefing with each other. I think we have the most hard-hitting question of the day. I'm going to throw it to Afi. Afi, are you sitting? You're sitting down. Good. Oh, okay. Wow. This is. This is. I don't know. Uh, this is a tough one. George Martin from Facebook. Oh, I knew him as Puff Daddy. When did he become Diddy? Whoa. Hey, George. Okay. Puff Daddy. Sean. Diddy. Puffy. Love. Brother. Love. 
I, I, that's all I have right now, but, um, he was Diddy maybe seven years ago. I, I don't know, but now he's brother love and uh, no, no, I think he's just love right now. Yeah. yeah. I think he officially <laughs> changed his middle changed. name to love. I think in the court documents, his middle name is love now. Yeah. It's, uh, we I, I was can all, reinvent ourselves. Yeah. Imagine if he had to put all of his names on like a test or something, it would just be uh, quite complicated. All right, let me go with this. Uh, Brian, this is from Taryn Tonin from YouTube. When will we get an update from the FBI, if any? Now, it's not the FBI. It's Homeland Security, right? Yeah, it's HSI. They have similar jurisdictions. HSI is um, Homeland Security Investigator, sorry. Uh, 22 agencies. There is some overlap between what the FBI does and the HSI. And so that's why I know a lot of people are saying, which one is it? Um, we may not, to be completely honest with you. Uh, we may not get an update until something major happens. The only thing, and again, I'm speculating, I'm not saying that it's gonna happen to Sean Combs, it's merely a possibility, but the next big step that comes after the raid of someone's house or the execution of a search warrant is an indictment, is an arrest warrant, is an arrest. Yeah. So either we're gonna see something like that if it goes in that direction, or we'll hear a public statement from the SDNY saying, our leads led us nowhere. Mm. Okay, let me follow up a question with you. Uh, this is Angela from YouTube. Patriot Act, didn't that give the government loads of new rights to listen and obtain evidence of all communications? Under certain circumstances, yes. I'm not sure how the Patriot Act would apply to Sean Combs because of the, the, the safety valves that would need to operate. You can't just Patriot Act random people. You can't just listen to Jesse Weber. I, I guess the argument would be, why do we have to do this? I'm, I'm assuming this is what she was saying, what the YouTuber was saying. Um, we, why do we have to do a raid if we think he's a suspected human trafficker? Very serious crime here. Could the Patriot Act be used to you know, circumvent certain other ways to do it? I think that would be difficult because, you, again, there are certain requirements under the Patriot Act. And while human trafficking is probably one that should fit into it, uh, there would be an expectation of privacy. And if you use that act to search someone's home based on civil um, liability, or, or not even liability because he's not liable for these civil claims, but based on civil, civil accusations, think about where that leads us. If I say that Jesse stole my $5, all right, let's use the Patriot Act to go search your home and go, and go search it. I think that's a slippery slope when you're using these types of allegations. Maybe if more is substantiated, we can get into that conversation, but not at this point, I think. All right, keep the questions coming in. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, X, Afi going to you. AJ Arndt from YouTube. Curious to know how the alleged shooting of an unnamed G individual by Combs, Combs Jr. will play into the complaint. To give everybody a perspective on this, if you go to the Rodney Jones lawsuit, they allege a shoot, he alleges a shooting at Chalice Studios, basically suggesting that I believe it was either Diddy or his son that shot this person, then tried to cover it up. Um, one of the more disturbing allegations in this, uh, uh, in, excuse me, in this complaint, how do you think it's going to factor into this, Afi? Um, okay, so he's, well, it's, it's criminal in nature, but um, the first thing I want to talk about again is the fact that G has um, supposedly gone missing or he has not been cited um, since this incident. Um, but uh, I think in the lawsuit, the issue was um, Lil Rod now has PTSD because he um, at least heard the uh, he heard the fight in the bathroom and then he actually saw G and he had to help him get to the front, like had to carry him because he was immobile. So um, it, how, how does it play into to um, the the raids is maybe that's well, what I'll answer. I'll I could answer that one. It, I mean, if you okay. take the allegations in the complaint is true, and you hear about firearms possessions and you hear about shootings, that is why I think that they might have been justified to use that level of manpower to go into these massive mm -hmm. properties where they didn't know who, where was what, what was going on. Brian, I'll throw it to you on that one too. Yeah. So yes, that's why part of the reason for the manpower. The other part would be that Rodney Jones. Um, said that there were specifically be guns at both of those locations, Miami and Florida. And if you're going to the Chalice um, studio shooting, there has been multiple reports at the time in which it occurred. I think it's somewhere in like early of 2022, where the published story was that G was shot outside of the studio yeah. and then went inside to the studio because of some sort of drive-by. What Ronnie Jones is saying is, no, I was there. I put pressure on his wound when he was shot. He was shot inside this bathroom. We even have still shots of the alleged bathroom mm -hmm. and some of the aftermath that happens that is in this complaint. And then that the whole story was made up to cover it up. He just says he has the clothing. Yeah, he says he has his clothing still from that time. Which is a curious thing to say. And, uh, I, I think, by that. yeah, I, I think for him, he was thinking, 
hey, I need assurances, if this is true. And I think he's saying that to say, if you want to test my, my veracity or my, or my truthfulness, test the clothes. If it's G's blood on it, how else would it have gotten there? Afi, over to you. Andy Snook from YouTube asks, could any of the accusations uh, being linked to the Tupac murder be brought up during this investigation? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Um, you know, um, and, and can we also just uh, go back to um, Puppy's uh, old bodyguard, Gene Gill? He has a lot to say about uh, Tupac. He, again, he has a lot to say. And I just want to just kind of address why they went into the home, um, you know, what they were looking for, something that Gene and uh, just other people who have been really close to Diddy for a long time. They've been saying he keeps trophies, he keeps videos, there are thousands and thousands of videos and something that's just really common with this case, something that's really common um, with uh, Lil Rod, uh, the, the petitioner in this case, is that everybody keeps records. So, uh, you know, that's why they went into the home with full force. They're looking for the records. And Everyone has put on record that there are records of all of this. So I think also when you when you step into a situation, you know, you know, you're wondering why did he keep the clothes? Why did he take videos? When you step into a situation and you're unsure of things, you know, you just start recording. You know, you well, say to yourself, you get like a little spidey sense. I need to make a record of this. Let me let me tell you, going back to the Rodney Jones lawsuit, he alleges that Diddy has mm -hmm. copies of every recording in his house, that he has cameras in all of his mm -hmm. house, and it recorded a lot of this alleged misconduct, uh, uh, criminal conduct. I always wondered if they were going for. The camera systems, um, I, I understand it's very expensive to re keep recordings of that, but you're also talking about a purported billionaire. But uh, let me go to you, Brian, on this next question. Um, two questions I'm going to throw to you one at a time. This is Dominic K from YouTube. What did the warrant cover in terms of what they were looking for and what they could take from the homes? So good, quite, great question. Yeah, by great question. And I wish, I really wish I can give you the answer. Um, warrants operate in two different ways. They have the affidavit and then they have the sworn testimony from whoever is giving this information, uh, usually from a confidential informant. I don't know because it hasn't been put out yet. But what I can do is I can speculate within a reasonable degree based on what we've seen on video. I know we don't have it now, the aftermath of the search and what they say they recovered. Uh, and also the, the point that you made about the video surveillance yep. that Sean Combs uh, supposedly has in his home. They're looking for that surveillance video. And the way that uh, search warrants operate is you can look for uh, what you're looking for in any place that it may be stored. So you think about surveillance, you can have a USB drive as small as your pinky finger. And so if it can, if it's that small, you can start tearing up bed sheets, you can look under beds, you can look in cabinets, you can look wherever you want. And we've seen in some places the aftermath of that search. And so I think my best guess is that's what was in the affidavit. I said I have two questions for you. This is the follow-up because it's related to it. I think there is a question about if he's under investigation or he's part of it, if he potentially left the country, how do you get him back? I've been asked this question a lot. Menzi uh, Fasha from YouTube, have Diddy's bank accounts been locked? No, because at this point in time, there would not be enough information, at least as far as we know, and as far as reportable, um, that he is the subject of a, uh, of a crime, that there's a warrant for his arrest. Uh, at this point, we're at the evidence gathering portion. I understand the worry and the theory about it. A billionaire could be an easy flight risk. He has his own private jet. I know at one point people were tracking where his jet were going. I've heard speculation that he was flying to Cape Verde uh, just off of the, I think it's the African coast, but geography yep. is not the greatest in the world. Um, but I don't think we're at a point where you can suspend someone's bank accounts. Uh, Judy Barton from YouTube. Uh, where does Harry fit in all this, Prince Harry? I'll answer that one. He's mentioned briefly in, in that Rodney Jones lawsuit as a person that was affiliated with Diddy. Try to show the celebrity lifestyle. He has, be very clear about this, not been implicated in anything. He has not been charged with anything. He is not even a part of this in any which way. And I say that because when we covered the Jeffrey Epstein case, so many big names came out during that document dump, and we had to be very careful to mention that they are not affiliated with any of that criminal wrongdoing in any way. So just make that clear. Yes, his name is mentioned in the lawsuit, but he's not uh, connected to it in any way, and there's no evidence to support that. All right, let me go back to you, Afi. Um, so one of the other allegations um, in the Cassie Ventura lawsuit concerned Kid Cudi. This is from Michael Velli from YouTube. Will the feds investigate the rumors that Kid Cudi's car was blown up by Diddy because he dated Cassie Ventura? For fax purposes, Kid Cudi's car was blown up. 
Absolutely. I think they'll investigate it. I think they'll, in, they're taking everything that's been filed. They're combing through it and they're going to in, turn over every leaf or every, um, every rock, every, um, car, so to speak. And anything that they can, can use against him, um, they're going to investigate it and try to use it against him. So definitely. Mm. Let's stay with uh, you. Can I also say it just goes to his access. It, it, if you can blow someone's car up, it just goes to um, the reach that you have, you know, um, and it just substantiates um, someone's fear of him, especially, you know, we were talking about witness protection earlier. You know, he has reach. He can send someone um, to blow up a car if he so desires over um, a, a, love is a love issue, you know, well, a firm love interest or something of that sort. So It's an accusation. We don't know. We don't know what really yeah. happened. But speaking allegedly. of witness, allegedly, speaking of witness protection, I'll throw this question back to you. Sharon Mullen from YouTube, since he can't be found, could, by the way, it's not that maybe he can't be found. I, I actually would think his lawyers know where he is. There's a chance the government knows where mm -hmm. he is. But since he, assuming he can't be found, could Diddy already be under witness protection, Afi? But did he already be under witness protection yes. or Gene G? Nope, D Diddy. Um, the question so is, could Diddy be under witness protection? I wonder if they're saying they want to build a case against someone bigger. If there's a big boss, if there's a if there's a big man uh, in play, yes, maybe. Um, and you know what? That would also, um, you know, if you listen to the rumors, it's been rumored a very long time that he is um, have has some sort of deal with some sort of government where, um, and that's been giving him the license to um, act so callously and carelessly, allegedly, of course, um, in the past with people. So uh, that's a really good question. Mm. You know, there may, may be. Um, a big boss man uh, in play. Uh, Brian, over to you. Major drama from YouTube. Could the son also be under investigation in this warrant based on the allegations he solicited underage girls? To give a little preface of that, you go back to the uh, Rodney Jones lawsuit. Uh, I believe it was his son, Justin, who was allegedly tied to the Chalice shooting, uh, was present during a party where there might have been underage girls. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Justin Dior Combs is the second name defendant in both the original and the amended uh, complaint for Rodney Jones. And so, yes, I think he's definitely a part of the investigation. What the Southern District of New York uh, and a lot of federal courts and, and, and prosecutors like to do is cast a wide net in terms of uh, evidence collection and then arrest the people not just directly connected to crimes, but also uh, on the peripheral, the people connected to them, because that's how you get information. That's how you lean on people. That's how you get plea deals. And that's how you get people testifying against others. That's how they make these cases so strong. I think the SDNY has like a 99% conviction rate. There's a reason for it. They're pretty good at investigating crimes. Yep. Uh, let's keep these questions coming. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, X. Uh, this is for you, Afi. Daydream from YouTube. Is this going to end careers and relationships? Good question. Absolutely. I think, I don't know. I don't know that Diddy can come back from this. I don't know how he would, you know, it's the internet. It lives forever. Um, there's too much evidence. There's too many um, people, too many stories. Uh, it's, I don't think that he'll come back from it. I think that uh, relationships are going to be severed. There's going to be a lot of pressure put on relationships because like we just talked about, you know, there may be somebody else in play. And we do know that Diddy has some long and strong relationships. So absolutely. And of course, as I mentioned before, there's a possibility that these people, high profile people who are connected to Diddy are now receiving subpoenas to get to work with the government, provide information, provide testimony mm -hmm. that could be used uh, against him in a criminal case. Um, let me move over. This is something you mentioned actually yesterday, Brian, different kind of context. Patricia from YouTube has asked, has Keefe D mentioned P. Diddy in his case? Now explain who Keefe D is and there we go. Keefe D is the last surviving individual who was in the car that prosecutors believe ultimately killed and shot uh, Tupac. Uh, and he is now being arrested. Uh, similar situation in terms of, there's always been rumors, he's even actually come out and said it multiple times, he's the only person in the car but never actually talked to who did the shooting, just that he was there and never gave any more information. I do not think that KPD has given any, and Afi would probably be good at this as well, I don't think KPD has given any information about Sean Combs while he was incarcerated. But like so many other people, uh, whether you're talking about um, Cat Williams, 50 Cent, um, the entire rap community. I think KVD has made comments on Sean Combs in the past. Mm. I'll give you an opportunity to respond to that one, Afi. 
No, he has. And definitely uh, Keith D is similar to Gene Deal. He will give an interview. And I think, um, I don't know what the saying is, but his, his, his mouth said something is something couldn't cash. Okay. Anyway. Um, but yeah, he, I, I've seen several interviews where he's called out, um, to Puffy saying, uh, Puffy, you know, it's kind of been like a, a coded message that he's been saying. Um, no, I don't think he said anything uh, since he's been incarcerated and he's in an interesting situation. I think he has a public defender, um, in Vegas. Um, but no, I don't think that he's mentioned Puffy, but in his interviews, he's definitely, it seems like implicated Puffy's involvement somehow in a uh, Tupac shooting. Well, and, and Afi, here's the thing, and this is kind of a general question now from Afflictor from YouTube. What do we have against Diddy that actually holds him accountable this time? So again, I asked it before, out of all the times, out of all the moments in history, it comes out right now after these lawsuits, what do you think they have that maybe uh, allowed them to go forward with a search warrant, that they had probable cause well, to search those properties? Why do you think, what do you think is going on here? I think it's just just the mounting evidence, you know, uh, it's, it's just the mounting evidence. And if you look at this latest complaint um, by Lil Rod, you know, I, I look at um, uh, the Rule 11 and it's when an attorney signs his name uh, to complain or a petition. You know, you, you can't be doing it for uh, frivolous reasons and you have to have some type of uh, foundation, you know, where, where you believe uh, the allegations and they're based and, and, and rooted in fact. And you're making these allegations as an officer of the court. Um, and it's the fact that he says, you know, he has spoken to these witnesses. He has videos. He has pictures. I think that is a mountain of, of allegations, but they're they're reasonably believable. Not only that, he settled a major case um, with uh, Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. That that's massive. You know, that's that's really you can just take that and you can just begin your investigation from there. You know, he's being held civilly accountable, and now he's going to if there are anything if there is anything there, he may be held criminally accountable. So uh, let me go turn over to Brian because I know you wanted to respond to that, and then I have a follow up question for you. I would say one of the major differences, that at least I believe, jury pool. After you convict Harvey Weinstein, Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, I think a lot of people are looking at these high-profile people where rumors have always existed and say, you know what? Prosecutors can get convictions. Also, the power of these people, Sean Combs, a very powerful person, a kingmaker in the R&B industry, but very different than Sean Combs in the 90s. He was powerful then. He is probably very powerful here, but not as influential and doesn't have the ability to silence people as he did, I, in my opinion, based on how we're seeing these allegations come out now. We didn't see these in the 90s when it came yep. to court documents. I think people are saying there's a, there's a crack in his armor and they're taking advantage of that. It's a really good point. Should also note that some of the allegations in these lawsuits happened outside of the 90s. They had actually more recently in time. Um, I will ask you this, though. This is a, a really, really good question for people who want to know where is Diddy why has he not surfaced? Squire from YouTube, if he was innocent, then why would he not just turn himself in to clear his name? <laughs> people, people always assume that guilty people run and innocent people turn themselves in. Um, I know this is a bit of a, a joking matter. I've got a young kid I often explain to him through like the Lion King. I mean, Simba ran away, right? He thought he had killed his father. It's fair, it's fair, if, fair if you, argument. Yeah, yeah I, I, you, I always go back to the Lion King analogy just to make it simple because everyone knows that, right? You cannot trust a system as to how it would treat you and feel that you can find innocence through other avenues in the criminal justice system. And I jokingly use that sometimes for jurors or other people be like, Simba was innocent, but he still ran. What we knew him to be was innocent. So how people react is always different. So you're saying Diddy is with a warthog and a... Uh, hey, Hakuna Matata. Yeah, okay, and, a, wow. and, a, and, a, and a meerkat. Um, keeping with that, uh, this, one, this one is shocking to read, but it is one... It's a question that's been asked, Afi. I say a question been asked. It, I'm the first time I've ever seen it, but I have to ask it. This is from Medi-Cal from YouTube. Do you think Leo DiCaprio is next? Why you got to drag Leo into this? Why do you have to? Uh, what's, what's the connection there? I'm not sure I follow that one. I don't follow it. Next. No, okay, well, fine. I All right. Just, I, I think like something I think Leo's <laughs> case is over 25 years old. All right. So I, I, that, one, that one hurt me to read. I don't know where that comes from. I don't but know I, what we're talking about. Um, all right. Let me ask you this one, though. Afi, I'll stick with you. Um, this is Dominic K from YouTube. Could they hold Diddy? on other charges like they might find in the house while they continue their investigation, i.e. illegal gun, uh, guns they found if it doesn't fit with what the warrant allowed? 
Yeah. If, okay. I'll, I'll answer the, the first. Can they hold him if they find something criminal? Yes. You know, he can be charged with crime and he'll likely post bond and get out. Um, you know, and I, I just kind of want to talk about also um, a, another person mentioned, um, why isn't he turning himself in? You know, turning himself in for what? What do you do when you have attorneys is you try and find out um, if there's an investigation happening. You, Your attorney should reach out to the investigator if they can find out who he is or um, an AUSA and, uh, you know, talk to that person and, and explain to them, you know, your position, position, your side, and maybe dissuade them from, um, pursuing this matter, you know, that's probably what he did. Um, but anyway, back to your question, if, you know, you find something during the execution of a warrant that is criminal, um, and you are within a place where you are supposed to be, and you're searching within the parameters and the scope of that warrant, yeah, if you find something criminal, he can be charged with it. Absolutely. All right, Brian, I'll go to you now. I don't know if you want to respond to that one, but I have another question for you. This is from at mood BYOJ from X. Uh, and this is really goes to the idea of, um, you know, why the raid happened now. And I've spoken to experts who've said it was preservation of evidence, possibly the ability that some evidence might have was about to be destroyed. The reason I ask you that is, what do you think is the possibility that evidence could have been destroyed since Cassie first filed her lawsuit? It seems like they gave him a lot of time to be able to get rid of things if he knew there was a possibility the FBI may be on to him. I mean, yes. I could see that, but in, in Cassandra Ventura or, or Cassie's lawsuit, it didn't highlight the video surveillance that was in his home. For Cassie, that was very much a sexual assault, rape, just one-on-one. -on -one. They didn't have the allegations of Sean Combs having video surveillance, trafficking people, all this evidence collection that he had. If anything, I would probably put it more analogous to on February 26th when Rodney Jones filed his lawsuit. Why did they wait that long? And I'm not sure... I know people think that law enforcement moves as they, as they do in like Law and Order SVU, where it's like in 30 minutes we can see a crime and it ends yeah. in the same time. But to, where are we at? March 28th? Yeah, it's my dad's birthday. I should know that. It's, it's a month. Birthday. Yeah. Thank you. Happy birthday, Dad. Um, it's been a month since Roddy Jones filed his lawsuit and the SDNY executed a, 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 a search warrant. That is fast. And doesn't it have to be, they could have gathered evidence. They have to analyze this evidence. They're speaking different individuals. They have to submit it to a grand jury, potentially. Um, and that could take Not some time. Not for a search warrant. A Not, grand jury no, 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 for an indictment. For an indictment. Correct. Now, what's why, why I'm saying we don't see an indictment immediately. Sometimes we do, right? Yeah. Sometimes we do in the, in the course of a, a raid like that. But sometimes they have to get the evidence, review it, and then they submit it to a grand jury. So this could take a couple of weeks. And even submitting to a grand jury doesn't mean you get an indictment on the True. day of the grand jury. True. In state court, grand juries can impanel for two or three weeks, even longer. In federal court, in, in grand jury investigations can be months, if not a, a year or more. Mm. All right. Let me go to you, Afi. Um, uh, this is Krista Cameron from YouTube. Who and what was on that plane he supposedly wasn't on? That's highly suspect, in my opinion. Follow-up question, why was he allowed on vacation right now? Well, why wouldn't he be? There's no warrant out for his arrest. This is simply an investigation. Uh, so they don't have any reason to keep him here. Uh, who was on the plane? I'm not sure. Um, it's uh, Apparently, there is a young man we talked about who went to Syracuse, played basketball, and he's been alleged to be his, um, his drug mule. But he was um, searched, and I think uh, there was just some personal, some personal drug use um, items that were recovered. I think it was a little bit of cocaine, a little bit of uh, marijuana edibles. You know, that's nothing in and out. I think his bond was $2,500. Um, but I'm, you know, and allegedly, Diddy didn't even know, allegedly, that the um, raids were happening. And then he was just, you know, going along with his day to day life, traveling on his jet. So again, why wouldn't he be allowed to go? There's nothing holding him here. And that goes actually to a question from Jules N from YouTube, uh, what was mm -hmm. on the plane, the evidence, so we kind of got in that. Um, let me stick with you, uh, Afi. This is from Pandora Cirque Gaming. Will Usher and Justin Bieber, yeah, will Usher and Justin Bieber be called as witnesses due to things they said they saw as kids? And, and that's interesting because we are seeing those videos circulating a lot. A video uh, uh, interview that Usher did with Howard Stern. Mm. We talked about seeing very curious things happening at his time uh, with uh, Diddy. And then we see this, I'll just say, it, a very disturbing video of a young Justin Bieber with Diddy 
talking about spending the next 48 hours together. I was weirded out by it. I think a lot of people were. Do you think they're going to play a role in this investigation? You know what I find interesting is that we've seen all of these videos before, and it's just now we're looking at them again with a different context. We're analyzing them again, and we're all saying, okay, this is a little strange. Um, I do wonder if uh, law enforcement has reached out to them um, to speak with them. I, I, I imagine that they're definitely trying to, but I also imagine that um, depending on, on what happened, um, during that time, um, and if, if any trauma was sustained, that I, I, I doubt that they'd want to be um, very forthcoming about it. You know, who knows what those details are and how it can impact um, their lives, their families, their futures. Um, but um, I, I do think for all of us looking at those videos now, especially seeing the Justin Bieber videos, you know, we're looking at it um, just with different eyes, different context, different understanding. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna go to you, Brian. This is Don Boulette. I had heard that the houses were in his kids' names, so anything illegal found in the houses would be the kids' properties, and Diddy can't be charged? No, not necessarily. Property, so property or possession operates in different theories, whether, so I, my, my watch is my property, it's on my person. Um, my dog in my home is, is, is my property. It's not in my person, but it's within the, the control of, my, of a home that I own. But my childhood trophies in my mother's house are also my trophies. Little do you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mom might say yours. otherwise. Um, but just because you, property is within someone else's home, it doesn't make it not yours anymore. If there's some way of connecting Sean Combs to these guns, for example, whether it be DNA, it's registered to him, where they are doesn't negate whose it is. I have to read this question to you because it's it's... <laughs> Mark Sager, hello. What are the chances the judge might let them leave a couple recording devices behind to see if they could catch anything when P. Diddy comes back? Uh, chances, like you're asking, like if a number, I'm not sure, but there is a possibility. Like you can you can put in surveillance and listening devices if you apply for it and you have a justification for it as well. Uh, I would not say it's extremely possible, but I also wouldn't say it's outside the realm of possibility. Have you seen that happen before? Like after a big search, they leave recording devices? Usually not after a big search because after a big search, like if you've seen the video of Sean Combs' home, it's destroyed. Yeah. So you have to go, the person, the expectation is a person would go back and then put it together. And then in that process of putting the home back together, you worry that they might find the bug. Yeah. And so I would think that it would not be the greatest of tactics and I haven't seen it before. I'm going to go to you, Afi. Um... This is from Deanna Harris from YouTube. The reason I'm pausing is because we're getting actually a ton of questions right now. If he did manage to get to a country without an extradition agreement, would he still be able to conduct slash, slash manage his businesses from abroad? That's a very good question. I would think, I, I don't have to think about that, but my, my immediate reaction would be no. Um, but that's a, that's a very good question. Um, I'm, I would have to bounce that back to you. I'll, 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 I'll throw it to Brian. Now. Brian, what do you think? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like what's, like, so what, what's the question? We have, he, we have emails. So he, yeah. 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 He, goes, he goes to North Indeed. Korea. Oh, yeah. He goes to North Korea or something like that, Indeed. right? Yeah. And he, there's no extradition warrant. It would depend on whether or not there's an arrest warrant for him and whether or not law enforcement mm -hmm. are looking to seize his assets. Yeah. If they don't do that, then yeah. How do you even know that I'm here? Maybe I'm in a non-extradition country during the show. Let me get you with another legal question. Uh, this is from uh, AJ Arndt from YouTube. Should we expect Combs' tech guy, Jose Cruz, who is allegedly responsible for safeguarding blackmail, to be subpoenaed? 100%. If, if there are credible allegations that Jose Cruz does as you say, then 100%, he would, he would be subpoenaed. I, I wouldn't see a reason not to. Mm. Um, let's keep it going. Um... So many good questions. That's really hard for me to pick. Actually, this is this is one for you, Afi. I am not familiar with this. This is from Nicolina777 from YouTube. Where is the young female he adopted? Do you know about that? I do not. Yep. Um, there, I, I, I've heard rumors. I, I don't know where she is. But can I can I kick it back? So if he, yeah, there was yeah, a of course. Out for him. I'm just, I'm just thinking if there was a arrest warrant for him, yeah, you're right. We, we, we do have uh, the, the internets and such, but I just think that if he were on any type of company, you know, and he's running from the law and such, 
<laughs> it would be just such a huge liability. You could seize his assets. Um, it just it wouldn't be advantageous to any company to do business with him. Mm, it's a good so, point. No, it's a good point. Good point, uh, Brian. Over to you. This is from Kellis. Which will be done first, criminal or civil cases? When you say done, okay. When you say maybe being too much of a lawyer, when you're saying done first, are you saying like whether or not the case would be finished? What I would assume is if he is indicted and he's charged, so that's a big if, that the civil cases will hold off and wait for the criminal cases to end. Don't forget, a criminal case has a higher burden of proof than a civil case. So even if you lose a criminal case, you can still say, all right, the evidence production process there allows me more information to fight my case and I can still settle or maybe even take it to trial and win. If you win the criminal case, then many people assume, and it's a pretty decent assumption, that you'll probably have a very good chance of winning the civil cases. Interesting. Uh I think everybody should check out the O.J. Simpson case as a good example of that dichotomy between criminal and civil. Um, all right, I'm going to throw this back to you, Afi. A lot of people have questions about this one. Eric Estridge, do you think the truth will come out on the murder of the notorious B.I.G., a.k.a. Biggie Smalls? I hope so. Um, you know, it, it all comes out in the wash. I remember where I was when he died. Um, or when I got the news, I think it came through on MTV. Um, but you know, I think the rumors are going to begin swirling again because, you know, we've all heard, um, that puppy had some involvement in, um, of course, Tupac Shakur's death, allegedly. And then over the years, it has also been alleged and rumored that he had some involvement in um, Biggie's passing. So I think the rumors are going to get swirling again, and we'll get maybe a few facts about it. I don't think we'll ever really, really know. But um, according to Puffy, uh, they were incredibly close. He was like his brother. And there are some conflicting stories about that. But um, will we know the truth? No. But I do imagine a lot is going to come out. And I think we're going to get a lot more witnesses just coming oh, out of the works from the news. I am so glad you mentioned that because, Brian, we have a great question from Just Debbie. Do you think they will subpoena J-Lo? Why do we talk about J-Lo? Because we know, we know that they were dating at one point. We know that she was there during that infamous nightclub shooting back in the 90s. It was referenced in Rodney Jones' lawsuit, basically saying Diddy or affiliated with Diddy, uh, that he carried out the shooting, had someone take the fall for him. You think they're subpoenaing J-Lo? If they haven't done it already, then someone is probably thinking about it. I think when it comes to all of these rumors, at this point, the SDNY has to ask themselves, are these potential uncharged bad acts that we can get in front of a judge to, to have a potential trial where we bring them in? Can we change rumor to uncharged bad act and how would that help our case? If Ronnie Jones' allegations of a potential RICO and human trafficking ring is true, because all of that would be added in. The best way I can probably analogize it to, think of the YSL case that, we, that we're following right now, where all of these uh, rumors and innuendos and, and, and rumors um, and, and kind of back talk with uh, Young Thug are now coming into a trial where it's like, yeah, we heard about this. Now, suppose we have a witness who can testify to it. And uh, another question we had with down with the click. If he goes to trial, will it be televised? No, it's a federal case. Wouldn't be. Brian, mm -hmm. stick with you for one second. We have Gats Grow. Uh, how did they obtain a warrant to search his home and not an arrest warrant? I mean, obviously, you can have a search warrant or an arrest warrant. Doesn't mean that they had enough evidence or they felt that they had enough evidence to go forward with the arrest warrant. Remember, they could still be trying to get more evidence. But talk to me about, because that seems to be a big area of confusion there, arrest warrant versus a search warrant, um, what's your take on that? So both stem from probable cause. It's the right. amount of information that law enforcement has to believe that a crime did, is, or will occur. But with a search warrant, it's probable cause that we believe evidence of a crime exists in this location. So can we go and search it? For an arrest warrant, it's probable cause that we believe that this person is a perpetrator of this crime. And so when you're talking about Sean Combs potentially being part of a human trafficking ring, I don't think at this point, law enforcement has the information to say we want to arrest him. They have enough information to say we can investigate more. Uh, okay, Afi, we're coming to the end. Got a few more questions. Tori Pence, Snoop, meaning Snoop Dogg, has long said in interviews that he really is slash was a pimp. Do you think he's next? No. Uh, next. 
I like how Avi just next to these yeah. questions. Next, done, Leo, next. No, okay. Uh, let me see if I can find you another good one. Um, I, I haven't heard anything about this, Avi. I'll throw it to you. Terrence asks, Terrence, is it true that members of Congress have formed a Diddy committee, Diddy committee, uh, to get to the bottom of this matter? I would say I, I have not heard of that, but I think that our Congress has other really, really important things to worry about other than Diddy and forming a committee. So I'm sorry to do this again, but fantastic question. Next. You're but like next. No, next. haven't heard okay. of it next. Yeah. Uh, add, I love that question. Add Handsome Henley back with us from X. Hey, Jesse, nice hair. Thank you. Uh, when will the evidence yeah. that Homeland Security found be released to the public? Does him leaving speak to the guilt, although his sons aren't in custody, as we talked about already? We don't know if they're going to come public, and they have no obligation to come public immediately. And by the way, we don't know if he fled. It was very interesting to say whether or not his sons, having facing legal jeopardy, could be uh, some sort of pressure put on him to return to the United States, but I don't think we're there yet. I'll give you 15 seconds. Well, I think right now it's just the one son, uh, Dior Combs, yep. uh, Justin Dior Combs. So I'm not sure if it's all the sons, um, but yeah, I don't know. And don't we have someone that works here named Hensley? Is this is, is this how they're getting the yeah, hair be, stuff? Could be. I don't know, but we have to wait and see for more information. All right, Brian Buckmar, thank you. Afi Patterson, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and everybody, really fantastic okay. questions. Really appreciate it. We love engaging with you guys. We'll hopefully be able to do more of this as this case progresses. Your guess is as good as ours. We'll see what happens. Uh, stay with us here on Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. See you next time.